it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel today's video I'm going to show you how to make these cute dog whoobies and a dog whoobie is just a dog toy to play with my dogs use them more for pillows occasionally we get in a little tug of war but at my dog's ages <laughs> they're really just pillows I think they're super fun to make they're super easy to make they make great gifts for someone who is getting a new puppy or maybe a new rescue dog. And one thing I do want to mention about dog toys. When I make them for my dogs or anybody's dogs, I do not add one of those little round squeaker toys. I just don't feel that they're safe. My mom had a dog many years ago where that little squeaker toy got swallowed and stuck in their intestines and so I try really not to ever add a squeaker toy that is so small that they can swallow it into any of my dog or pet toys and of course that's up to you if you want to now you can find this free crochet pattern on my blog and as always I'll put that blog link right down there in the notes underneath this video. You'll notice that my two whoobies here are two different sizes. This one is 12 inches and this one is about 8 inches. And I'll explain to you how to make the shorter one as we go along. They're made exactly the same. It's just a matter of how many rows you stitch in the body of the whoobie to make the different lengths. And I'll explain that as we go along. And so what you're going to need is you're going to need some yarn and I just grab some out of my stash you as you can see you can use a variegated or you can use a solid you can use as many colors as you want to this one we did two different colors for the paws and the ears where this one I did the same colors as the whoobie itself the muzzle here is the same where this one is different and so you can use whatever you've got in your stash and come up with some really cute dog whoobies. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this cream color for the body of my whoobie. I'll do the muzzle in this beige, which is this portion. I'm going to use this blue <clears throat> to do the little paws and the ears. And then I'll use this brown for the facial features and the nose. And so I've just grabbed some balls of yarn out of my yarn stash. The body takes about an ounce to an ounce and a half. It doesn't take very much. And of course, just small amount of all the other ones that you have on hand. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook. And the H hook is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need that needle for sewing on your pieces and embroidering your face. And you'll need your scissors. And then the last thing you're going to need is some stuffing. You can use any kind of stuffing that you have. I like to use this polyester fiber fill. And you can make a tube and stuff the tube and put the tube inside with a pair of old pantyhose. You can use old other things. Just remember, if your dog is a chewer and they pull that out of the center, um, you know, make sure it's not pieces of yarn or something that they can choke on. We have to remember dogs will swallow anything and so we had to be very careful when it comes to that sort of thing. We're going to be starting with the body of our whoobie and we're going to start at the head and then work our way down the body of our whoobie. So I've got my beige yarn that I'm using. I'm going to start with my slip knot and I'm going to chain three. Now the body of the whoobie is worked in rounds. We're not going to be joining. We're going to do what's called continuous rounds. And so if you have trouble keeping track of your rounds, you can use a stitch marker. Some people don't use them. I do. And so I've got one here all ready to go. Yarn over. Go in that second chain. Pull up a loop. Yarn over and go through all three loops. That's one. two, three, move that tail out of the way, 
four, five, and six. Now I'm going to take that stitch marker and mark that stitch at the top. Now, if you want to use another piece of yarn, just slip it through there and that will tell you where the last stitch of that row is. So for row one, we have six half double crochets. For row two, we're going to place two half double crochets in each of those six. We're not going to join. We're just going to yarn over and go right in that first stitch and stitch two half double crochets. One and two. Three and four. Five and six. Seven and eight. Whoops. <laughs> Nine and ten. And this brings us to the stitch that we marked. So we're going to pull that out and do eleven and twelve. So now we have 12 half double crochets and I'm going to mark that last stitch. So the first row we had six half double crochets and the second row we have 12 half double crochets. For row three, we're going to repeat what we did for row two. Only now we have 12 half double crochets. So if we place two half double crochets and each of those 12 will have 24. So yarn over, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, and we'll continue on around till we reach back to our stitch marker, placing two half double crochets in each of those stitches. So now I've stitched 22. I'm going to pull my stitch marker out. I'm going to stitch my last two stitches, which will be 23 and 24, and then I'm going to replace my stitch marker in that last stitch. There we go. So now we have 24 half double crochets. We're not going to increase anymore. So this next stitch, we're just going to stitch, or this next row, we're just going to stitch one half double crochet in each of those 24 stitches around. And you will notice that it will start to curl because we're not increasing anymore. One half double crochet in each of the 24 stitches till we get back over here to where our stitch marker is. I've stitched one half double crochet in each of the half double crochets around. And here is my stitch marker. I moved it up a row. And now we're just going to repeat one half double crochet in each of the stitches around again. One half double crochet in each of the half double crochets around. And I chose to do half double crochets because I like that it's a nice tight but a little bit thicker stitch than a single crochet. So one half double crochet and each half double crochet around till we get back over here to our stitch marker. So I have completed row five, stitching one half double crochet and each stitch around, and we still have 24 half double crochets, and that's what we're going to have on each row for the remainder of the body portion of our dog Wooby. Now, it's a good idea to go ahead and take a second and weave in 
that tail of yarn to the inside so that once we get the body made, you don't have to turn it wrong side out and weave that in. Just thread that tail of yarn on your needle and weave it in. All right, so now what we're going to do is if you want your dog wooby to be 12 inches long, like my long one, you're going to need to repeat row five for 25 more rows. If you want to make the shorter one, you're going to need to repeat row five for about 12 to 14 or maybe even 15 rows, depending on how long you want your dog wooby or your dog toy to be. If you're making it for a smaller dog, you might want to make that shorter one like I made. What I really suggest is you continue to repeat row five until it's the length that you want. And you can just take your tape measure and measure it out and do as many rows as needed for the length that you want. But if you're going to make one that is 12 inches like the one that I'm going to make, you're going to need to repeat row five for 25 more rows. So I have repeated row five for 25 more rows, and that brings me up to row 30. And again, this is for the 12 inch dog would be toy. If you want it shorter, do less rows. One thing to keep in mind is we're going to be gathering the top shut. So you're gonna need those couple extra rows for the top of the head. All right, so I'm at my last row here. I'm going to take my stitch marker out and I'm going to slip stitch in the next two stitches. So one, two, and then we're going to cut off a piece of yarn that's about 18 inches long or cut the yarn at about 18 inches long so that you have a long tail of yarn and we're going to tie that off. And now we're going to get to stuff the dog Wooby. So we're just going to take our stuffing and begin to stuff down inside the Wooby. Now, the amount of stuffing is up to you, how tightly you like to stuff it. I don't stuff mine real tight because my dogs pretty much just use it as a toy. They don't, uh, or as a pillow toy, I should say. They drag them around and they sleep with them and play with them, but they don't, aren't really chewers. So if you want to put more stuffing if your dog is a chewer to make it a little bit tougher. But I like mine about like that. And of course you can move it around, make sure it's nice and even. And you want to stuff it down in so that you have a little bit of a hole on top. We're going to take our needle and thread it on that long tail of yarn. There we go. And now we're just going to go in and out those stitches. We're going to work all the way around the end of the wooby until we reach back to where we started. All right, so now we've gathered it up. I'm trying to show you the top here. And we're going to pull on that string, make sure that stuffing's down inside. We don't want any sticking out. All right, we're going to hold it really tight. All right, and now we're going to weave that in securely, but this is the bottom and this is the top where the face and the head are going to be, ears, muzzle, and all of that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and weave this end in. I'm going to go around those stitches, making some more loop stitches, going through fibers and stitches until I'm comfortable that that is not going to come undone. All right, so I'm going to make a few more over here. Pull them in snug. We don't want any extra strings. All right, now I'm going to go right down inside. I'm going to swirl my needle around and pull my needle out over here. 
give it a little bit of a tug and clip. All right. And you may have to adjust your stuffing a little bit, push it around, make sure it's where you want it and all of that. And that's the body of our dog, Whoopi. We're going to be making four paws. And again, we're going to be stitching in the round without joining. So I've got my stitch marker ready to go. We're going to begin with the chain three. And we're going to stitch six single crochets in the second chain from the hook. So we'll go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through the first two loops. There's one, two, three. Move that tail out of the way. Four, five, and six. All right, so we're going to mark our first our last single crochet on that row and now on row two we're going to stitch two single crochets in each of those single crochets so one two three four five six seven eight, nine, ten, and then we'll move our stitch marker and stitch eleven and twelve. Add our stitch marker back in. So now for row two we have twelve single crochets. For row three we're going to place one single crochet in each of the single crochets around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Take our stitch marker out and stitch our 12th single crochet. And stick our stitch marker back in. And again, if you don't have stitch marker, you can use another color of yarn. All right, so now we have 12 single crochets again. And so what we're going to do for row four, five, six, and seven, which is four more rows, we're going to repeat row three. One single crochet and each stitch around for four more rows. So I have stitched those four more rows. So now I have seven rows for my paw. I'm going to go ahead and take out that stitch marker. I'm going to slip stitch in the next two stitches. And then I'm going to tie off and I'm going to leave myself about 12 inches of yarn so that I can gather it closed. All right, now before we do that, we're going to turn it wrong side out and we're going to close that little hole in the center and just make sure the end is weaved in nice and tidy. All right, so we'll just go around those stitches at the beginning with our first row and this is the inside of our little paw. making sure we're going through those stitches and fibers and we'll just weave that in until we're happy that that's going to stay put. Clip off our yarn and turn it right side out. Now we'll just take a little bit of stuffing. It doesn't take very much. Just a tiny bit. We'll thread that tail of yarn onto our needle and we'll gather it closed the same way we did the top of our Wibby's head. We'll just go in and out those first stitches at the top until we get back around. Now 
And then I like to go across and then I'll go this way. And I just want to make sure, whoops, <laughs> they came off my needle, that the end is closed up. All right, go back across. All right, so there is one of our little paws. Now, I've already got three of them sewn on. Here's one of the top ones and here's the two bottom ones. And so we want to line them up so it looks even. All right, and remember, you need four. You need two top paws and two bottom paws. And so we're just going to line them up. And now these from the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're going to line that up with that tenth row from the top. And the ones on the bottom are just sort of lined up. So if you want it to sit, it could, but it doesn't have to. All right, so, and then we just sort of line it up how we want to put it on there. And it's up to you where you put them. You can put the paws closer or farther apart. It doesn't matter. And so now I'm just going to start stitching around. I'm going in, making sure I go through fibers and stitches and stitching it on. And the key to getting it to stay on is not to just go through holes. Go through a stitch. Go through the fibers of the yarn. There we go, like that and just stitch it on. And you want to put a lot of stitches because if this is going to get tossed around and played with, whether it's by a puppy or a child, because kiddos like these too, you want it to stay put. And I just keep going around until my yarn is pretty short. And then I'll do a couple of tight stitches hidden in down in there and then I'll go up inside the paw. I'll swirl that yarn around, around that stuffing and pull it through. There we go. And clip it. So now my puppy or my wooby has feet paws and hand paws. <laughs> it's cute already. All right, we're going to make the muzzle. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And we're going to chain eight chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're going to place two single crochets in the second chain from the hook. One, two. One single crochet in the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. That leaves us one single crochet, or one chain, and we're going to stitch two single crochets in that last chain. Now we're going to turn, and we're going to work on the other side of this chain. So in that first stitch, we're going to stitch two single crochets, one, two, and then we'll stitch one single crochet in the next five. One, Here's two, three, four, five, and then we'll stitch two single crochets in that last chain. We'll join to the first single crochet and chain one. All right, for row two, we're going to place two single crochets in that first stitch, one, two, then we'll place one single crochet in the next seven stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, whoops, <laughs> six, and seven. Then we'll place two single crochets in the next stitch, one and two, and then we'll place two single crochets in the next stitch, one and two. Then one single crochet in the next seven. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then two single crochets in that last stitch. 
Then we'll join to the first single crochet and chain one. Now our last row, we're just going to stitch one single crochet in each of the single crochets around. One single crochet in each of the single crochets around. And you'll notice that it's starting to curl in just a little bit, and that's going to help us with the shape when we put it on our dog, Wooby. Join to the first single crochet and then we'll tie off leaving ourselves again about an 18 inch piece of yarn so we can sew this onto our dog. We do need to take a minute and weave in this in though. So we're going to thread the end of that yarn onto our needle. We're going to take the muzzle and we're going to gather it a little bit. We're not going to gather it as much as we did for like on the top of the wooby or um, you know on the little paws. We just want to bring it in just a little bit for the shape. So we'll just do a little bit of gathering around the edges or stitching around the edges for gathering. And so now we have just a little bit, uh, looks like a little shoe. And I'm going to put a little stitch there to hold that. We're going to grab just another little bit of the stuffing, just takes very little, just to kind of hold its shape. And then we'll place this on the front of the dog. You want to center it above the two little paws and the center of the face. And we're just going to stitch it on the same way. Making sure we go through stitches and fibers as we stitch it on. And I'm just doing little what I call whip stitches, of course, just to make sure it's going to stay in place first. And then if it's not where I want it, I can adjust it a little bit. I'll just go around the edge, whipping it into place. I should say whips, stitching it into place. And once we've got it where we want it, we can always go back around and stitch it on more securely. Again, it's going to be played with, whether it's for children or for your dogs. And so you want to make sure that that is going to stay in place. They can toss it around the room and just have a lot of fun with it. All right, I'm running a little short of yarn, so I'm going to have to get some more yarn and make sure that I've got that the way I want it and make it secure. One other thing you might want to do is if you notice, I have a little hole right there. And so while I'm weaving in, I'm just going to go up here and stitch around that so that I can close that up so it looks nice and tidy. All right, so I'm going to put this down inside that stuffing, and then I'm going to get some more uh, yarn on my needle and make sure that my little mouth muzzle is going to stay in place. All right, now I'm going to put on the little nose and the little smile of my puppy and the eyes. And so what I do is I sort of center 
from the bottom and I'm going to leave that out for later. I'm going to go ahead and add the mouth portion first. And I like to do this because I think it helps center the nose better. And then I'll come up at the top where that is. And so what I've done there, we're going to weave this in, of course, but I've made the little smile and a little part of the front of the muzzle. All right, to make the nose, I just make some stitches like this. Just go through. And I do this way. I don't put any buttons. I don't put any um, snaps or anything like that. I want to keep it simple so that it can be played with and we don't have to worry about doggies or kids. swallowing any buttons okay so there's the nose and now I'm going to come up here over to the side and just see the nose real good there all right so I'm going to come up over here to the side and of course I've got him upside down there and when I do the eyes on this one I do again similar to the nose I just make a couple of stitches I don't do any French knots or buttons or anything like that because I want to keep it simple and then I'm going to try to and I try to go in a stitch not a hole because we'll lose them and now I'm going to try to center it make it the same make the eyes similar there we go All right, so there's that. I'm going to go in and I'm going to go back underneath the muzzle. And that's why I did the way I did here. And I'm going to make a knot. And I know that's a no-no, but I do it underneath the neck. And you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to, but that's just one of the things I like to do. And then I sort of push that knot into the inside. All right, so <laughs> my eyes. There's my eyes. There's my muzzle, his little smile. And the last thing this little Wooby needs is its ears. We decided to keep the ears on this Wooby really simple. They're just basic little puppy ears. Now, if you want to make it a kitty cat, a bunny, a rabbit, or maybe a chihuahua ear, you can use the ears off my animal puppets and they will work just fine on this Wooby. But for the ears we have designed for it, they're very simple. So we're going to make a slip knot and chain 11. We're going to place a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across. We're going to chain one and turn. You have 10 single crochets for row one. We're going to chain one and turn and stitch one single crochet in each of the single crochets across. And that's it. We're going to cut our yarn, leave ourselves a little bit to sew on to our dog, and tie that off. And then we'll take our needle and weave in this short one first. And like I said, it's just a really simple dog ear. And again, you can use the ears off my puppet. 
that has bunny ears, bear ears, rabbit ears, and a chihuahua type ear that's a little different if you want to use any of those ears. They'll work perfectly for this dog, Whoopi. All right, so let's get our ears on. I've already made another one. I've already got one ear sewn in place, and it's really simple. I take the ear, I line it up with that one. I usually put it on that. There's one, two rows. You put it between the second and the third row on the top. It's up. And I'm just going to make some slip stitches underneath, not slip stitches, whip stitches, <laughs> making sure I sew it on securely because you know those ears are probably going to get pulled on. And like I said, I know I've already said it, but if you want a cat ear, a bunny ear, a bear ear, you can get those ear patterns off my puppet. All right, so it's sewed on nice and tight. I'm going to weave that in. And then just go right down inside, swirl in some of that batting, and cut that off. All righty. So there's his ears. Dog Whoopie. Super cute. So here he is, <laughs> our silly dog will be all completed and ready for Max and Rosie to play with. <laughs> 